Hello, grade fours. My name is Aaron Lee. I'm grade 11, and I'm currently Dwight's um, MUN Club president. And today I'm kind of here to talk to you about Model United Nations. <coughs> so, so, to, so I'm going to talk about things in this order. First, I'm going to talk about what the UN does in general, which I'm sure most of you know a little bit about, right? The UN SDGs. And then I'll talk about how Model United Nations works and like how does it work. Then I'll talk about my experience with Model United Nations. The United Nations. So, does everyone know what the United Nations is? Yes. Can, can someone tell me what it is? Anyone? Go ahead. I'll give you guys a chance. What's the UN? It's many countries that are trying to stop wars and world hunger. Wars and world hunger, what an excellent way to put it. Um, it's like a world-class organization with like 195 countries in it. 93. 93. 93. Yes, 93. You didn't know that, YJ? Yeah. Wow. We did, YJ, we did this in third grade, literally. Yes. <laughs> Maybe I didn't need to come and teach you guys. You know a lot. Uh, yes, so the UN, as you guys have told me, is an organization with a bunch of countries. So they're a bunch of countries basically trying to do something. So they're trying to create a resolution, or it's more like a promise between countries to try to solve certain issues in the world, like war and world hunger. And so, like, it's, it's a great organization, and it's a bunch of countries, like South Korea is in the UN, the US is in the UN, and it's a bunch of countries trying to work together to try to this. So here, this complicated looking document is an example of a resolution, a UN resolution. So you know how, let's say uh, you and you, you guys fought, okay? You guys had an argument. What do you, you guys had an argument, okay? He keeps stealing your candy in, at, in Halloween time, okay? <laughs> then, then we need to, then, we can't have you guys fighting all the time, right? So everyone will come together and we'll come together and say, hey, you know, can we promise to share the candy this time? But we can't be sure if we just make a promise vocally, right? There's no proof of the promise. So we write it down. And that is what the UN does in conferences. If two countries have an argument or there's some kind of issue that's going on, we write down a bunch of promises to make sure that everyone is happy. And that is what the UN does in in these conferences by talking to each other and creating a resolution. What would you try to do? What do you, what would you guys try to do if you guys were in the UN? Would you try to, would you, you know, declare war on another country? Or what would you try to do? No money. No money. For we're going for, going for a more communist approach here. That would be interesting. Uh, anyone else? Go ahead. Well, like, start by achieving the goals of this True, true. We we haven't done that yet, have we? That that's a good that's a good way. Uh, anyone else? Anyone else? Any aspirations? Yes. Add more funds for the SDGs. Add more funds for the SDGs. A novel pursuit. Yes, that would be awesome. So yes. So the UN. That's what the UN is. Now, Model United Nations. Do you guys know what the word model means? Can someone tell me? Fake or pretend? Fake or pretend. That is a good way of saying it. But as you see, this man is very happy. He has a bunch of little trains that he plays with, okay? That, that we call a model, that we would call this a, mo a model train or a model train set. And because of that, yes, you guys are absolutely correct. Model means fake or pretend, yes. So MUN, Model United Nations, is a way, is our way of trying to replicate what the UN does in a student environment. So it's almost like, think about it like a play, where we each pretend to be a certain role, uh, uh, in this case usually countries, and we try to fake a UN conference, like a play, just like a play. And we act out conferences, we debate, which means we will argue with each other politely in a diplomatic manner, and try to get our point across. And obviously, we cannot act as our, on our own opinion. It's more like we're acting on the country we're representing. So even though I'm South Korean by nature, I might be represented in Mexico, or the United States, or China, right? 
So I'll be acting out in the role that I'm playing rather than my actual thing. Again, just like acting. Because in a play or in a movie, the actors won't be being themselves, right? They will be acting the role that they're given. Same thing in the model you might make. So how does it work? How does anyone work? Right. So there are six kind of steps that we usually take in mobile United Nations. The first of this is research. So when we are um, doing an MUN, like I said, it's a play, right? What do you do when you're trying to play a character in a play? What would you guys do? Yes? That's a character like on the personality and attitudes. Right, so research about the personality and attitude of the character, right? Excellent. So that's exactly what we're trying to do in the research stage of things in MUN. Because, like, for example, let's say I'm given a role in MUN. I'm the delegate of Slovakia. I don't know anything about Slovakia. I don't know what they want. I don't know what their opinions are on passet and politics. So I need to know who I'm playing, what kind of opinions I need to have and I need to stand by. And that's what the research part is about. I need to check that, my, that the opinions of the country, I know the opinions of the country, and I can communicate them effectively within debate. Opening speeches. So what do, you, what do you guys usually do in like, let's say you guys move to a new school. Um, what do you guys do on the first day? What do you guys do? The girl in the back was first. Uh, you introduce yourself. You introduce yourself, yes. Uh, let me give, you're completely correct. Let's see if someone else, does anyone else have a different answer? Uh, no? Everything's good? Okay. So yes, exactly. You introduce yourself. <coughs> That's exactly what the opening speeches are because when a bunch of countries come together in a large room, right, to talk about things, they don't really know what each other's opinions are. So when we're trying to ally with someone or we're trying to make groups, or friend groups, right, we don't really know who, we don't even know the name of this country, right? So in opening speeches, we introduce ourselves. We say, honorable chairs, fellow delegates, and distinguished guests, the delegate of a country, we are here to act on this issue, this is my opinion, and my name is this. It's basically like saying, hey, my name is this, and I like playing video games, and I hope we can be friends. It's the same thing, except it's for countries, and it's formal and political, and that's what opening speeches are. So we're trying to see who is our friend, basically. Lobbying. So we've introduced ourselves now, right? What would be the natural next course? This is like break time now, and morning break. What do you guys do? Um, like Start um, to play. Exactly. Start to play. Start to talk with the people who you think is cool, right? Mm -hmm. You guys have introduced yourself, so you're like, okay, you know, that that person, that person seems cool. I can probably get along with that person, and you start kind of talking to them. That is the lobbying process, where essentially after the opening speeches, delegates are like, okay, he agrees with me. He doesn't though. So I'm gonna try first to be friend with this person. And that's what happens with lobbying. So we're seeing who agrees with you, who your friend groups are, and that's kind of what's happening in lobbying. Resolution. So I already kind of talked about resolutions with the example of he's stealing Halloween candles from him, right? It's where if there is a disagreement or there is an issue going on, we try our best to solve that issue. And we solve that issue through a list of promises. I already showed you the little, little paper. So we have a bunch of promises that can help solve the problem, and we write it down. And you remember how we were lobbying earlier, like we're making friend groups? So different friend groups usually have different opinions. Like, for example, let's say this is a friend group. They might say the best color in the world <coughs> is blue. Yes. And then <coughs> this group might say the best color in the world is green. Yeah. Right? So everyone has different opinions. So maybe the people who think black is the best color is in one group, and the people who think blue is the best color is in another group. And they'll, they'll disagree with each other, right? So they will write different, they will, let gentlemen, yes. They will write different resolutions. One resolution might say, let's all promise that blue is the best color. Another might say, let's all promise that red or green or black is the best color, right? So there'll be different sets of promises. So we would, be, we would need to talk about these different promises because some of them might disagree with each other. Like, black and blue can't be the best color in the world at the same time, right? So we need to talk about that. And that's where debate comes in. We talk about 
these each resolution specifically. And we go, hey, this part in this list of promises seems unfair to me, or seems unjust, or it doesn't seem to be effective. Or hey, maybe we can add this part to the list of promises because I think it's missing. And that is what debate is. We're, we're talking about things, we're trying to see whether the resolution is any good or not. Because I personally believe, and I have found from experience that once you debate about something and try to find solutions together through debate, it tends to come up with very creative solutions because you're forced to defend, defend your opinion. Saying blue is the best color and not saying anything, that, that would be like a normal opinion. But if you debate why blue is the best color, you might, you might come up with interesting points. Like, hey, blue is the best color because it's a soothing color. It makes people calm, right? You need to do research about why blue is the best color. And you get to know about things that you didn't know before. And that's the great part about debate. After debate, well, actually during debate, this is kind of, this is where the steps kind of get mixed up. This is amendment. So this is basically correcting the list of promises. Like, like I said, in debate, you guys will be like, oh, being like, yeah, you know, that part, that doesn't seem to be that good. This part, see, we need to add this part. So that is where, that is how amendments work. So we correct the resolution, we add parts of resolution, or sometimes we delete parts of the resolution. So that's what amendments are. And amendment literally means change or fix. So it figures. Right. So now I'll talk about the positions. So the positions, we have the secretariat. Do you guys know what the secretariat does? Well, I have it written here. But <laughs> the secretariat is the organizer, the secretary team, rather, is the organizer of an, MU, of an UN or MUN conference. They are the ones that are, that are making sure that everyone is happy, that everyone is in the same place, and that everyone knows what's going on. After that is the chats. So, Yeah, so making sure that everyone is invited. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Good. So that is the secretary. And then the chat. So, uh, usually in the UN, there are different committees. Do you guys know what different committees are? No? No one? Okay. So, okay. Uh, earlier, the guy over here said, the UN has to solve world hunger and wars. And that's correct. But the UN has a lot more things to solve than that. World hunger, health issues, war, are matters of security, of economics. All of these different issues can be debated in the same group of people because that would be insanely difficult. Think about, let's say, in the, the entire grade four is the UN and we're trying to talk about whether blue is the best color, whether ramen is the best food, and jeans are the best kind of shorts, right? Three arguments going on at once. That would be incredibly confusing. So what does the UN do? The UN has different sections. So the UN usually has the General Assembly, the Human Rights Council, the Economics and Social Council, the World Health Organization, the Security Council, the International Court of Justice. And, and all of these different groups of uh, UN committees, these are called committees, they talk about different things. And the chairs are people who are in each committee, there's two to three chairs per committee, and basically they're there to make sure that no one is me. Because debate only counts as debate when it's polite, and it's regulated, and it's very, and it's very um, political and nice, basically. You need to be nice. And if well, some person starts getting mad and worked up and starts going, hey, I don't like you, that's why I disagree with you, then will have a little bit of a problem because that country might be the USA and they might be really angry and they might start a war because of that, right? So we want to make sure that there are no international incidents that lead to war or disagreements between countries. So chairs are there to make sure, hey, you can't do that, sit down, be calm, you need to use, you can't use personal pronouns, etc. So the chairs there to make sure that they're calm. The delegate is what you would normally think of when you think of uh, UN, where these are the representative of the country. So the delegate of France, the delegate of South Korea, the delegate of Japan, the delegate of Mexico, the delegate of Niger, of Estonia, etc., etc. These are the representatives of the country. Because let's say South Korea, South Korea and I don't know Slovakia has a disagreement. 
everyone in South Korea cannot go to Slovakia and go, hey, Slovakians, we have an argument, right? We should choose one person who's really good at talking from South Korea, one person who's really good at talking from Slovakia, and make them kind of talk it out for in place of the citizen. And that's what a delegate is. It's someone who represents a country. And guests. So guests are people who know the topic well. Have you guys seen um, the video with Greta Thunberg um, making the speech? Has anyone seen that? No? So, uh, not a good example then. Well, basically, uh, let's say it's about the conference about cybersecurity. Then we might invite Microsoft or Google to speak, right? We, because the UN delegates, although they're incredibly small people, they might not necessarily know that particular topic that well. So we need people who do know the topic very well. So we invite people like Bill Gates or people who know a lot about the issue or non-governmental organizations that work with the topic and we invite them to talk, to explain what, what it is and, and that's kind of how it works. So again, we have secretary, chair, delegate and guests. And the, main, the most important one I'd say is delegates and chair because that's the most important thing. So, what should you do in an MUN conference or what does the UN do? We usually call each other as the delegate of someone, right? Let's say you are the delegate of the United States of America. What's your name? Atlas. Atlas, right? So, let's say I'm the delegate of South Korea. We're in a UN conference. I can't go, hey, Atlas, what's up, bro? Let's, let's, go, and, let's go and grab some grub, shall we? Like, we can't do that. that, that it's a little bit weird, right? A little bit. We need to be a bit more formal than that. So we, I say, hello, delegate of USA, would you, go, would you like to go out to dinner today? Like, polite ways of calling each other. We can't call each other by name. Because usually, actually, calling each other by names makes you more aggressive. It feels more personal, right? Let's say the USA is like putting a lot of taxes on Korean goods, and, and I go to Atlas and go, Atlas, stop putting goddamn taxes on our stuff, man. It's, it's not helpful for our economy. Um, that, would, that would feel a little bit a little bit aggressive to you, right? But let's say I'm like delegate of the United States of America. Could we request, could the delegate of South Korea request to not put as many taxes on our goods because it's harming our economy? It's a lot more formal, it's a lot more polite. It feels less like an attack to you, but a more like a request to the country you're representing. And that's why we do that. And that's along the same lines of why we don't use personal pronouns. <coughs> let's say I don't use your name, instead I use you. You stop doing what you're doing, or, or like, like they are bad people. Like that, that those we call personal pronouns. I, they, you. That again makes it a little too personal. So we try to make it, try to make it less personal. So we can only call ourselves as well the delegate. I cannot say I think you suck. I would say the delegate of South Korea believes that the delegate of USA is mistaken. <laughs> we would switch it up a little bit and make sure that it doesn't sound. Aggressive. <laughs> Guys, you, you need to remember, you need to remember, again, we're trying to make the entirety of great force, or in this case it's tougher because it's a bunch of countries, to make one promise, right? We're trying to make them agree to a list of promises. And that's hard when a person's in a good mood. When a person's in a terrible mood and you're trying to make them make a promise, that's even worse. So we try to not make them have a decent mood, usually. So that, that's why we need to use, you can't use personal pronouns. We have to be formal, we need to be polite, we need to be diplomatic, and we call each other as the delegate of something, so that it's not too busy. So, what do we do in Dwight and my experience? So, we practice for mock conferences. So, do, does everyone know what mock means here? Can someone tell me? Like copying? Copying is a good word, but practice is the closer word. You're right though. Yes, it is copying and practicing for conferences. So usually, you know how like, you know, Dwight's sports team fights like Chadwick and... They're so bad. The referees... Is that what Thank you for your excellent opinion. Uh, so, uh, like SFS or we fight SIS, whatever, right? We try, we try to um, compete with people. It's the same with Model United Nations. Each school has their own conference. And we go to those conferences and we compete with each other as delegates to see who's the best delegate. 
And for example, here's GSIS Moon from the Gyeonggi-do Suwon International School hosts every year. We have Chadwick International Mo uh, Mo Model United Nations, which is what we call Kai Moon. We've got Yale Model United Nations, which is a very big one. And this is ours, Damon, that we are holding in January this year, actually, that I'm organizing. So we usually practice, basically. Like, we train to make sure that we all know how to talk, we all know the procedures, we all are prepared to compete in these countries. Like, you know, like, our volleyball team meets every week, like, three times to practice, right? Same thing. We get, we'll get rusty if we don't make sure our debate skills are here, make sure our mechanics are here. So, yeah, we practice speaking, we practice researching, we, we, we practice being diplomatic. And that's what we do in, out in the Dwight Club, and we talk with each other. And my experience, so I look really dumb in this photo, but uh, basically, my experience with Emyeon is that I get to meet a lot of new people. Um, like here, this is Yale Emyeon last year, and look at how many people there are. I, I mean, the hall is even bigger than this, right? It's even bigger than our gallery. I mean, our um, sure. auditorium. Thank you, my brain is working. So <laughs> we'll have something like that, and we'll have hundreds of people from Japan, from China, from Korea, international schools from all around Asia come to this one conference to compete. And it's amazing because everyone has a different perspective, right? China, someone from a Chinese international school might not agree with my views on a certain topic, and someone from another school even might disagree with my view. You know, and, and that's amazing because you can talk with each other, you can see if you agree, you can see if you disagree, you can talk about things other than MUN, and you can make friends all around. It's like a great chance for networking as well, although you guys are too young for that, and it, it's just amazing. And uh, this one was also Yale and Yuan. As we can see, we are having a lot of fun. He's obviously a little photo shy. Uh, also Yale and Yuan. This one is Damon 3, so this was two years ago now. Uh, you will see me looking very red-faced and annoyed in this photo because I was annoyed. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and it's just a lot of fun. And you, you kind of get to meet new, new people. You get to refine your debating skills. And it's just for me a lot of fun to talk with people, to be able to debate, to be able to discuss, and that's about it. So that's, that is where my presentation ends. So uh, we can have a quick Q&A session. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead. Yes? What country do you represent in the UN? What country do I? Yes. Well, that's random depending on what competition I go to. They usually choose that for us. So I may be France one time, I may be Slovakia one time, I may be Afghanistan, so that changes. So, uh, why did you join? Why did I join MUN? So I joined MUN four years ago now, that was in grade seven. Uh, I joined because I thought it looked fun and, and cool, so, so I, I did, and I'm glad I did, because I liked it. Uh, my brother did debate on MUN in SFS and in Dwight. Oh, interesting, that's cool. Oh, cool. That's really cool. I'm glad you have a cool brother. Uh, is, sorry. Um, have you ever been to other country to um, um, do this type of thing? Uh, I would have, but <coughs> unfortunately recently there was COVID for the past two, three years. So a lot of the conferences that would have been in other countries, like Oxford MUN, Beijing MUN, and some MUN conferences in Japan, were all held online. So I, I stayed in Korea, unfortunately. But it'd be cool if I did, and I might, you know, if there's still, there's still time left. I'm not that old. And during the conference? It's usually English because, again, the UN, we usually do, the UN does usually use English. Um, yeah, it's just English. Yeah. Sorry? Who founded MUN? I, have, I haven't got the faintest idea. It is the oldest club in Dwight. So it's almost as old as the school itself. I believe it's like six, seven years old now. Um, so I don't really know who did it. I know Mr. Roddick, uh, a teacher who left, was one of the founding teachers. But as for the students, I don't know. Thank you, Beth. Good question. Um, how often do anyone meet here? We meet every week on Wednesdays after school for an hour to practice. 
Any other questions? <coughs> okay. Why do some countries not uh, join in the UN? Why do some countries not join in the UN? So <coughs> there can be various reasons for that. Like, for example, sometimes it's just about the country just not being nice to other countries. So the UN themselves say, hey, you can't join or you don't count as a country and we don't recognize it as a country. Uh, for, uh, for example, there is a big controversy with someone, something like Taiwan, where it's like they and Hong Kong, where they're like, you know, we're sep they say we're separate from China and some people might disagree, some people might agree. I'm not going to say my opinion here, but it's technically still a part of China. So they can't really come into the UN, but some people say it's a country. So there's a little disagreement to that usually. Um, it's, it's very complicated. Um, sorry, he was first. Is there, is there an MUN office in Korea? There's a UN office in Korea. I don't, I don't know if there's a designated MUN office. Uh, I might need to look into that. That's a good question. What kind of pot do you MUN? What kind of <laughs> in, wait, in the club or? In the club. Uh, I think I did say, but I am the president of the MUN club, so yes. So I usually, um, I do stuff like this, I teach kids how to debate, how to write, um, how to prepare for MUN conferences. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just like a teacher, you know. I've retired, I'm too old for MUN now. I'm just kidding. Where are the countries? Which country? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure. I don't know where it's founded, unfortunately. I know, I know that most, um, most Asian MUN that we say is founded by Thaimun, which is like um, Hong Kong, Singapore, Thaimun. Okay, yeah, it's, it's called Thaimun. Uh, maybe I'll, I need to look into that later. Maybe send me an email, maybe I'll. Look that up. Uh, <laughs> um, sometimes <laughs> depends on what it is, right? If it's a UN conference about let's get nukes out from North Korea, <laughs> then North Korea <laughs> would probably be there. And North Korea usually is in. It's not an official part of the UN. It's not like a official member like most countries are, but. It, he come, he, they come and go. They sometimes come. Um, it's very funny when there's a North Korean delegate there because, in my experience, sorry, once I had someone representing North Korea and they started their speech as the Supreme Leader Kim Jong Un blesses you all in the conference, and, and I thought that was hilarious. Guys, guys. Which country was the first country to join the UN? The MUN. MUN? Like, no, uh, the actual UN. The actual UN. It's the US. They, they like made, like the UN originates from the League of Nations, which was the first kind of version of it, but it failed miserably. But after World War II and every, and some countries have news, we were like, hey, let's make a, let's make a corporate thing so we don't end up ending humankind. So that, that's kind of what happened. The US, so the five countries that are the strongest in the UN, we call the P5. And those are the ones with veto rights, or right to completely just say no to a set of promises or resolution. And do, does anyone know who those countries are? Mm -hmm. Russia. Russia's one. USA, United Kingdom, and France, and the United States. And? Russia. France. Germany, Spain, Russia, Belgium. Okay, we said, wait, I'm losing track. We said France, right? Yeah. We said UK, yeah. we said US. We said Russia. We said China. We did say China. Oh, China's China. missing. Yeah, that, that's the last one. Yeah. Okay, back to normal questions. Thank you, guys. Uh, I think you were first, sorry. Um, is Cuba in the UN? Is Cuba in the UN? Yeah. That's one of those cases where it's like, is it a country or I'm pretty sure it is. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty it's sure it's, it's I'm like 99% sure it is. If you want to know for sure, I'll search it up right after this. Okay. Nope.
that would be, imagine all the presidents of every country was in one place. That's a great time to set up a bomb, right? So no, we don't do that. Yeah, we, we don't, we like to have our world leaders alive and intact and very safe. So that's usually not something that happens. Usually. But who knows, maybe if World War Three happens, then that might be happening. <laughs> It's it's just a guy. It's, he's he'd be like the delegate of North Korea. He'd be like a politician. Um, that's about it. Yeah. Or they would have a translator. But usually, most delegates speak English. Is that a question? Yes. Yeah. Who? So it would be like um, the. In Korean, that'd be like Weigyobu Changguan, but uh, like, um, like, I don't know what the translation for that is. It's like the guy in the government that usually goes out to countries to negotiate, that, that guy will be called like the delegate and they will represent the country. There's a, usually there's a position within the government, or it would be like they would send someone in their government that's pretty high ranking, not the president, and they would go. Mm -hmm. is, is that a question? Are you just. It's just a very stylish map. Great. All right. Is that not about it? Cool. Cool. All right. Thank you guys so much. You guys are a great audience. Thank you so much. I think.